Lots to talk about with the Sunday Roundtable. Joining us this morning are Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh and Republican political analyst Rob Gray. You just heard our governor, our next governor, I should say. Uh, so does she sound more like a Deval Patrick or a Charlie Baker kind of governor, Marianne? She sounds like Maura Healey. I mean, there's no comparison. I mean, Deval Patrick's a Democrat, Maura is a Democrat. Charlie Baker played basketball in college, so did Maura. All three went to Harvard. Maura Healey, the first woman elected governor of Massachusetts, the first openly gay governor of Massachusetts. She's a progressive on some issues, a moderate on others. She's willing to take on a fight and win those fights. And you heard all of her ideas and proposals. I thought she laid them out very well today, night and day. And she comes to the job with much more state uh, government experience and politics than either one of them had when they walked in. So is Marianne Wright new mold? Well, listen, I'll answer the question. She sounds like Charlie Baker, a, a raging moderate in, in this interview. It, you know, the, the question will be, how does she govern? Uh, these are new stripes for her. Um, previously, she had very, very progressive stances. She moderated during the gubernatorial race. Let's hope she stays there. It's been a successful uh, model for Massachusetts with, with Baker, a bipartisan model. And speaking of Governor Baker, he withdrew his very controversial pardons of the Amaralt siblings who were convicted in the Fells Acre child sex abuse case. He couldn't get the votes from the governor's council. Was this a political miscalculation or a failure on his part to lobby effectively? What do you think, Rob? Well, I think it was both. He, he misread the tea leaves and he lacked conviction to follow through on his convictions. And I think it was related timing wise, we now know, to his next job announcement. I think the last thing he wanted to do was have a fight uh, to, to commute these sentences, to pardon these people uh, at the time when um, he's, he's getting this job and it could become controversial and maybe derail that job. And that hearing, Marianne, I was there, it lasted for hours and critics said it just devolved into a retrial. It, it did. And the fact is, if you're going to have a vote on anything, what's your hard count? So someone either didn't count or they counted wrong. If they lobbied, they didn't listen. And that was political malpractice across the board, except for pulling the plug at the end, which was the only thing they could do. Speaking of um, Governor Baker's new job, it didn't take him long to move on from that loss of the Emeralds. The next day he confirmed he's becoming president of the NCAA. You heard what Governor-elect Maura Healey had to say. What's your reaction, Marianne? Perfect perch to launch a presidential campaign, eh? <laughs> he, gets, he already had more national exposure than he's ever had, yes, in the announcement last week. It, you have national connections, relationships you can um, build to launch a campaign. And by the way, how hard is it to look like a raging reformer walking into the NCAA, which is like the FIFA of college sports? <laughs> it's terrible, but he's got a great opportunity and probably $3 million a year. I was just going to, and not only that, lots of exposure to big money, yeah. you know, with the, all the folks boost. that he's going to Yeah, I mean, with. he's a great choice for the NCAA. It's a great get. I actually don't think it's a good platform for national office because this place is chock full of problems. But Charlie made his name as Mr. Fix-It. The NCAA needs a lot of reform and fixing. Well, like Mitt Romney said, into the fire, I believe is what he said. <laughs> exactly. So Pfizer wants to quadruple the cost of COVID vaccines. The new price, as much as $130 per shot, once the federal government stops paying for it in a couple of weeks. Senator Warren, she is calling it pure and deadly greed. Pfizer has three weeks to respond. Marianne, is there any good response here? Yeah, just provide it for free or to the ability to pay. If it's a public health problem, then it's a public service. And by the way, Pfizer's made since July, as of July, $7.8 billion just on this. What do you think, Rob? Well, listen, Pfizer's a client of my firm, but let me give you my opinion. Elizabeth Warren is way off base. And Pfizer did not take the Operation Warp Speed money to develop this vaccine. This vaccine has saved millions. And Paxlovid, the treatment for Pfizer, for Pfizer that Pfizer makes for COVID, um, is also saving millions. So she should be happy that the private sector is developing this stuff. To develop it, they need to charge what it costs.